Hello friends, this is Vijay. In our today's Hindu daily, we are going to see the following list of topics. The first one, take a step to regulate deep fakes. Its significance is in preliminary GS1 and mains GS3. The first topic, take a step to regulate deep fakes. Okay. Here in this article, the author have been discussing the negative aspects of the deep fakes, but generally we can use deep fakes to create uh, gaming and uh, virtual reality videos, etc. Here in the definition, deep fake it is an outcome of the artificial intelligence. Okay, so it is a type of artificial intelligence used to create convincing images, audio, and video access. With the help of the neural engine, we will be feeding some two or three inputs. It can be from images or audios or videos. So that neural engine or certain or that machine, it will observe the traits from those images and it will create some other images which have been matching the traits in a required form. Okay. So this is how deep fake videos and all have been getting created by the artificial intelligence. You might be knowing the human intelligence. With the help of human intelligence, generally human beings will be accomplishing the task with a minimal effort, right? The same way certain programs, codings and all will be helping the system or computer to work in such a way like similar to the, the way what have been following by the human beings. In the discussion, they have been given that it is the ability of a computer or a robot controlled by a computer to do tasks that are usually done by humans because they require human intelligence and discernment. Okay, so this is the artificial intelligence, but this artificial intelligence have been working on the basic principle of machine learning. Machine learning is nothing but a, it is a simple tool to create an artificial intelligence and computer science, which focuses on the use of data and algorithms to imitate the way what humans learn, gradually improving its accuracy. Okay, in a childhood, you might be known that we will be uh, doing certain tasks without uh, noticing any shortcuts, right? But in the course of time, we will be learning the shortcuts and we will be accomplishing the task in a more efficient way. In similar way, certain missions will be functioning with the help of the codings and algorithms. Okay, so this is what the machine learning. And let us see very briefly, what are the issues which are related to the deep fakes? In the intro part, here actually, it is irrelevant to the exam. Okay, let us start from here. Here they have been given that the lack of proper regulations creates avenues for individuals, firms and even non-state actors to misuse AI. Okay, so this article is going to discuss the negative aspects of the deep fake technology. The author have been discussing various issues in this article. So the first one he is telling that DeepFake have been aiding in generating the misinformation and it have been helping the antisocial elements to do a propaganda. Generally, example let us take in Jammu and Kashmir, you all well know that various terror outfits have been operating in the landscape of the Jammu and Kashmir. They will be using the deep fakes to create a propaganda against a state apparatus. Okay, so they will be radicalizing the youths with the help of this misinformation and their propaganda. For that, they will be using the deep fakes. In the deep fakes, they will portray that certain elements or certain videos against the state agencies. Okay, then the second one, it depicts the individual embarrassing and compromising situation. Generally, defects are used to create a pornography, which uh, mainly it have been targeting on the women, right? Almost 96% of the defects, almost 96% of the defects are pornographic material. So with that material, they will be blackmailing the women or they will be demoralizing their uh, status, okay? The impact will be, there will be a privacy infringement, obviously, and the harassment, okay? 
Generally, deep fakes are very hard to find. To identify the deep fake material, we should keep the neural engines or some other artificial intelligence devices. Okay. Then the author have been discussing about the financial fraud, which recently happened in Europe. There, certain fraudsters they misuse the information of deep fake, and they actually grabbed some two lakh euros from the CEO of company which have been functioning in UK. It was a deal between the company in UK and the company Y which is in Germany. But certain fraudsters by using this uh, deep fake technology they actually grabbed some 2 lakh euros from the CEO of the company in UK. Okay. So this is what the author have been discussing in this article. Then the third subtitle creating tensions in neighborhood. It is having significance for India. Deep fakes can be used to influence the elections. How the fraudsters or the antisocial elements will be influencing the election with the help of deep fakes means they will be spreading the hatred speech, then the deep fake videos, then the audios against the existing state agencies. In such a way, they will create a sentiment against the state apparatus. Recently in Taiwan, the China engineered the same thing with the help of the deep fake. Okay. But China is the front runner with respect to having regulations related to the deep fake. Then the second one, espionage and radicalization activities. Recently, you might have known since February 24, 2022, the Russia have been fighting a war with Ukraine. So in the midst of war, there was a hatred video and there were certain fake videos also. In one of such fake video, the Ukrainian uh, president Zelensky, Vladimir Zelensky, he have been asking the Ukrainian soldiers to surrender to the Russian army. Okay. This is how the deep fakes can be used to create a misinformation. Then what are the need for the legislation and what are the existing provisions we are having? Okay. In the existing provisions in our IPC, Indian Penal Code, Section 500, which have been mentioning that there will be a punishment for defamation. If an individual or if an organization is spreading uh, some defamation against the citizen or certain company means, we can file the defamation suit. Then the second one, Section 67 and 67A of IT Act. Okay which have been punishing the citizens for spreading sexually explicit material in explicit form. Okay. So this is very important provision. And the third one in RPA Act, we are having certain provisions which prohibits the creation, distribution of false or misleading informations and further the political parties, they need to get approval from the election commission for advertisements in both the conventional media and the social media. But these provisions, okay, these provisions, it won't be enough to tackle the menace of deep fake. Therefore, the author have been asking the government to include certain provisions in the Digital India Bill. And he have been asking that the provisions what we are going to include in the Digital India Bill, it should enable itself to tackle the menace of deep fake in the future also. Okay. So this is how he have been concluding in the article. Now let us see the second article. This article it is about the yesterday Modi flags of Wales longest river cruise, the Ganga Villas. So the article is about it. Here there are some basic facts. The Ganga Villas have been covering some 3200 kilometer across five states in India and Bangladesh. And the cruise begins yesterday, January 13, 2023. And the journey had started from Varanasi after the, witnessing the Ganga Arati. The journey ends in Dibrugar Assam. Okay. So the starting point is in Varanasi and the end point is Dibrugar. There are almost some 50 tourist sites are there in the midst of the journey. And the cruise have been covering the places like Sarnath, which is very important for Buddhist and the Mayam. The place is very notable for tantric craft. And the third one is Majuli, 
where world's largest river island is located okay then it also transverses through the sundarbans and the gaziranga national park these are ecologically fragile area but you know very well that the inland waterways it won't pollute the track in which they are traveling then the fourth one the duration is 51 days and the average fare it is irrelevant in the exam point of view then let us see very briefly the the significance of inland waterway transport the first one the cost is very low you will be requiring a very low investable capital and the operation and the maintenance cost also very low compared to the conventional roadways and railways then the second one the energy consumption they are much greener in operation compared to the conventional roadways and uh, you know very well that it is considered to be one of the most effective mode of transport from the point of fuel efficiency in the roadways we are having a fuel efficiency of almost some the 30 to 40 percent okay the ic engines fuel efficiency is almost 30 to 40 percent but the inland waterways it is highly efficient and the efficiency is ranging between 70 to 75 percent then i already told you the emission is very low so it is a greener transport then the fourth one is related to the handling capacity after the sea liners the inland waterway vessels are having enormous capacity to carry the bulk cargo the first one is sea liners okay the first one is sea liners then inland waterways then railways then the fourth one roadways okay so after the sea liners inland waterway is having enormous capacity to carry the bulk cargo coal and all at a much cheaper price then the navigable potential in india with respect to inland waterway is almost some 14500 kilometer okay in europe europe is having 37500 kilometer okay so they are having a 37500 kilometer of navigable waterways but in india out of the 14500 kilometer we had used only 2000 kilometers so far then the growth the development of waterways will stimulate industrial growth and tourism today it has been accounted for 5% of the waterways but by 2027 by 2027 inland waterway will be having a share of some 33% of the total waterways okay then we all well known that the inland waterway is less congested therefore the probability of accidents is very low compared to the roadways so that is one valuable significance then with respect to the accessibility it will provide access to the interior and the remote areas especially we can use inland waterway to promote the transfer of goods in the northeastern states and in the chota nagpur regions okay so therefore we can transfer coal food grains and all through the inland waterway transport in the challenges <clears throat> we can bifurcate the river system in india into two variants one is peninsula river system and the another one is himalayan river system himalayan river system is both the it is a rain flooded and a glacier flooded but in the peninsula river system it is completely dependent on the precipitation from the northeast monsoon and the southwest monsoon therefore the fluctuations will be there it have been acting as a hindrance to the inland waterway transports then the second one reduced navigability in india especially in the himalayan river system we are facing a huge siltation because himalayan mountains are very young fold mountains so therefore the waterfall and the cataracts and all have been acting in the river system and in the coastal stretches the salinity is one of the hindrance okay it have been corroding the bottom of the vessels so that is another one hindrance in india we are having lack of adequate navigation system which have been resulting in the unsafe passages and high travel time okay if we are having some navigation system for the inland waterway means then this 
time consuming will be very lower and the passages and all will be very safe then the fourth one lack of enough terminal and berthing facilities after establishing the ports we should be having the berthing facilities then only we can load and unload the consignments into the ships okay so with respect to in india especially in, in inland waterways we are not having adequate berth facilities then dredging operations we all well known that a siltation is one of the major barrier right therefore we should do the dredging operations often it will impact the aquatic flora and the fauna in the river regions therefore it is not ecologically advisable to do the dredging operations often then obviously in the inland waterway vessels we will be using the oil and diesel for the energy generations therefore there is a huge possibility of spillover of oil and diesel from the vessels and with respect to cargo also there will be a leakages right so it will impact the the biota of the river system then the last one displacement for establishing certain berth facilities and terminals there will be a requirement for human displacements so it is another one major concern and government need to frame such guidelines to reduce the impact of the displacement then what is the way forward we should do environment friendly dredging operations okay even though the siltation is very low in very high in india but we should do the dredging operations by creating minimal environment impact then building new ports and berths is another one important area government should focus and we are in a dire situation to create a proper river information system then only the safe passage for the vessel will be ensured then the gps and the necessary infrastructure should be clubbed to promote the night time navigations okay these days we don't have night time navigations so we should club the digital gps and we should create such infrastructure for promoting the night time navigations and apart from that we should include the private partnerships in creating the infrastructure with respect to the inland waterways then only the cost efficiency will be ensured with respect to the inland waterway transports now let us dive into the another article more than just an address okay here in tamil nadu after a special address governor r n ravi he walked out of the assembly because he inserted certain statements and he lifted certain statements from the previously vetted document therefore the legislative assembly they passed a resolution condemning the act of the governor therefore he walked out of the assembly for the past few days we have been discussing this article often today also we are going to discuss and we are going to discuss certain basic tenets of this article the introduction here in the introduction the author have been doing the intro with the constitutional procedure prevailing in the uk okay in uk the first session of their assembly will be proceeding either by the king or by the lords commissioner acting on his behalf okay so that's what they had given but before kick starting the session the speaker should be appointed and the and the member should finish their oath taking process okay so this is what the author have been discussing in the intro part and in a special address the author have been stating that the india adopted the westminster model of democracy okay in that under article 87 president is to make a special address to both houses of the parliament assembled on the commencement of the first session of each year okay so the president will be addressing the first session of every year why the president should address because according to our constitution president is also a part of the parliament after the bill passed by the lok sabha and rajya sabha it should get the assent from the president right so after giving his assent only the bill will become an act 
Then in a similar way, Article 176 of the Indian Constitution, it requires the governor to make a special address at the first session of each year of every state legislative assembly and to both houses wherever the state also have a legislative council. Certain states, they are having only the assembly and in certain states, they are having both the assembly and the council. Therefore, the governor required to give an address in first session of each year. Okay. So, this is what the article have been mentioning. It is a convention. Okay. Therefore, the Indian constitution also upheld that con convention what it have been prevailing in the Westminster model of democracy. The author, he also quoted the opinion of the Calcutta High Court. It was a case between Said Abdul Mansur Habibullah versus the Speaker of West Bengal Legislative Assembly. Okay. There, actually the Assembly stated that it is just a conventional or a ceremonial formality. But what Calcutta High Court had stated was, it is not an idle or ceremonial formality. It keeps the members informed about the executive policies and legislative programs of the state government. Because if you are noticing any special address by governor means or by president means, they will be mentioning the, the previous year policies and the future course of the program, future course of the policy programs. Okay, This is how they will be discussing in their special address. Therefore, the court stated that it have been informing the members about the executive policies and legislative program. Then the author have been discussing the opinion of the Supreme Court. Supreme Court held that the constitutional conventions like the special address okay, is a part of the constitution as its written text and it have been fixing the empty spaces in the constitutions. This is how the Supreme Court had opened. That's what it is in the sentence and it is well settled that constitutional morality consists of not only adherence to the written text of the constitution, but also to the constitutional conventions. These conventions will be interstizing the written constitution and enable effective coordination between the legislature, executive and the judiciary. Generally, these special addresses, they have been fixing the spaces in the written constitution. Okay, So that's what the Supreme Court had opened that. The author have been quoting this to mention that the special address, they have been fixing this page in the constitution. And the author also discussed about the article 361 of the constitution. It have been providing complete immunity from any legal actions because our founding fathers, okay, like Ambedkar, um, then uh, Rajinder Prasad, they had been opened that the governments would be maintaining the highest standards of rectitude and propriety. Rectitude and property means they will be morally upright. Okay. Rectitude means they will be morally upright. And property means they will be adhering to the conventions what we have been following since the historical time. Okay. So this is what the rectitude and property means. And in the conclusion, the author have been stating that the constitutional role of the governor is to protect and defend the constitution for that they should cooperate with the legislative assembly of the state and the Raj Bhavan should function above the party politics. Okay, So this is what the author have been mentioning in the conclusion. Now the fourth article, the marriage of minor girls, Supreme Court to check the legality of the personal law. Here the background information is the couple, they were in relationship in Punjab. The guy, he aged about 25 and the girl, she aged around 15. To marry the girl, this guy, he had been converted to Islam. Okay. Then she married that girl and this matter, it came into the court. Where the Punjab and Haryana High Court, it upheld that the girl on attaining the puberty or age of 15 years and above could be married on the basis of the Muslim personal law. Because the Muslim personal law, it have been following the tenets from Sharia. So on the basis of it, it upheld the marriage what the couple had done. 
Then it also stated that POXO won't apply here. Generally, if the gal is below 18 means there will be the application of POXO Act. Okay. But in this case, it came under the Muslim personal law. Therefore, we can't apply the POXO. This is what stated by the Honorable Punjab and Haryana High Court. Then it came before the Supreme Court. Now the Supreme Court is a to check the legality, whether girls as young as 15 years can enter into wedlock on the basis of custom or personal law. When such marriages constitute an offense in statutory law, these are the things the Supreme Court had to examine. In the meanwhile, Supreme Court said that the High Court order won't not act as a judicial president for other courts. In constitution, we can keep the judgments of Supreme Court and High Court as a judicial president. Okay, But in this case, the Supreme Court stated that that High Court order, it won't act as a judicial president. Solicitor General on appearing for the NCPCR, National Commission for Protection of Child Rights, he said that girls as young as 14 and 14 are being married. Okay, He also asked, can personal law and custom be pleaded in the face of statutes such as POXO and IPC, which makes such marriages an offense like that he have been asking. Also, recently, in Kerala, the High Court made an observation. The provisions of POXO would apply if the bride or groom was a minor. Okay, So there is a conflict of the opinion by the High Courts. Therefore, the Supreme Court had to check the legality of the provisions. NCPCR, it states that POXO and the Prohibition of Child Marriages Act are secular in nature. It should apply to all the sections of the society. Like that, they have been arguing in the Apex Court. Under the title Rising Age of Marriage, the Prohibition of Child Marriages Bill 2021, it has been increasing the minimum age of marriage for women from 18 to 21. Right now, the minimum age for women to get married is 18. But through this bill, we are going to elevate the age to 21. Okay. National Commission for Women, they have been advocating to elevate the minimum age of marriage for Muslim women in par with the women from other faiths. Okay. For other faith, we are keeping minimum age of 18. But for Muslim, we are keeping a minimum age of 15. Okay, therefore, NCW have been asking to elevate the minimum marriage age for Muslim women. The National Commission for Women, they are also stating that if the women belongs to Islamic community, they are getting married below 18 means they will be exposing to the abuse and harassments. Okay, so therefore this provision is arbitrary and discriminatory. Therefore, we should lift these provisions like that. The National Commission for Women have been advocating with regard to this issue. So this is how the article have been ended. Now let us see the another one article. High Court take note on human elephant conflict in Odisha. Recently, in the past few years, there have been a rise in the human elephant conflict in Odisha. Between 2019 to 2020, there were such 24 encounters. But in this year, NCRB recorded that 202 human elephant encounters. Okay. So, therefore, the High Court have been hearing an important matter on January 18th in this issue. Therefore, it, it came in today's newspaper. What is man animal conflict? You should know some basics about the man animal conflict. In the name of agriculture, urbanization, and infrastructure development, human beings have been infringing the boundaries of wildlife. If they are infringing their habitat means they are facing the wrath of wildlife. So this is the man-animal conflict. Human-wildlife conflict is when encounters between the humans and wildlife lead to negative results. It may be in the form of loss of property, livelihood or even life. So diversity and retaliatory killing have been driving certain species to the extinction, especially the leopard. You might have known in India, we are having numerous quantum of leopards. Apart from elephant, we are facing massive human wildlife conflict with the leopard alone. Okay. 
So now let us discuss very briefly why is human wildlife conflict on the rise? I already told you we have been increasing our horizon for urbanization, agriculture expansion, industrial development, etc. and all. So it has been leading to the human wildlife conflict. Who is impacted by wildlife conflict and in what ways? Both the animal and the humans they will be affected because of this conflict. The humans will be losing their livelihood and health, uh, food security and property and all. Meanwhile, the wildlife will be losing their uh, their habitat and their life, etc. What is happening in Odisha? In Odisha, you should know that there are numerous elephant corridors are there. Because of the human development, these elephant corridors are under attack. Therefore, the movement of the elephants have been getting affected. It has been leading to the human-animal conflict in the Odisha landscape. Okay. The elephants were venturing into the newer habitations in search of paddy and other farm producers. And especially the males, they have been getting attracted to the most nutritious food in the farm fields and it has been leading to the conflict. The fragmentation of elephant corridors, I already told you, the fragmentation of elephant corridors is the most important phenomenon which have been leading to the human-animal conflict. This movement has been obstructed as the state government is going in for blind expansion of industrial, mining and road projects. Not only from the private projects, the elephant corridors is also getting affected by the government projects too. And the solution, solution in Odisha, there is a need to strengthen the corridor between Sambalpur and Mahanadi resource because in those areas, the corridors have been fragmented and it have been leading to the enhanced human wildlife conflict in this region. Therefore, it is a dire need to strengthen the corridor and connect the corridor. Okay. Now let us see the prelims and the mains questions. The, here is the prelims question for you. Consider the following statements about the National Waterway 1. The first statement, it stretches from Alagabad to Haldia. Okay. Then the second statement, the Jalmar Vikas project aims at a capacity augmentation of navigation on National Waterway 1. Then the third statement, the Hooghly River portion of the waterway from Haldia to Navdi is tidal. The first statement is right. The National Waterway 1, it has been stretching from Alagabad to Haldia. And Jalmar Vikas project, it is a World Bank funded project. And it was started in the year of 2019 with the aim to augment the capacity in National Waterway 1. It is exclusively focusing on improving the capacity augmentation in National Waterway 1. Then the Hooghly River portion, it is tidal. Okay. It is tidal. So all the three statements are right. Answer option D is the right one. Here is the next question for you. National Waterway 3 is running between which of the following regions? The first one, Haldia Alagabad. We have seen in the previous question that Haldia Alagabad belongs to the National Waterway 1. So it is a wrong option. Dubri Sadia, it is a National Waterway 2. Okay. So this is also a wrong statement. Then Kotapuram Kollam and Champakra Canals. Okay. So this is a National Waterway 3. So the statement C is right. And Vijayawada Muktiyala, it is a National Waterway number 4. Okay, so option A, B, D are wrong and C is the right answer for question number 2. And here is the main question for you. The question is, has the governor been acting more of an agent of the center rather than being constitutional head of the state? Analyze in the light of recent controversies involving the post of governors in India. Okay, just do practice it and let me catch you in another news analysis tomorrow. Bye.